What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to the Mindless Horror Podcast. We are about a what was it, a week after, almost a week after Horror Nights. We are filming this in a new location today. We're filming this actually at my mom's house, um, out here visiting. I told Jeremiah to come by, filming this podcast. Um, and we're just going to talk about the event today. First and foremost, what did you think about this year's event at Horror Nights? Absolutely insane, man. Like, it was a new experience. Um, I absolutely love the Stranger Things maze that was right there. Stranger Things killed it this year. I think that and Universal Monsters are what took the show this year, and I'm very glad that they did a, an amazing job on the maze, and I couldn't have honestly picked a, a, a better company to uh, do the maze. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I was astonished by the Demogorgon, how it was made, how it looked so realistic and scary. I was impressed by the actors that they had in there that you know, resemble the characters from the show so well. Yeah, I mean, it was so immersive. It was good. Yeah, it was good. So, yeah, we got there, uh, me and George got there around 2 or 3. Uh, we ate, and then we met up with you at around 6, 7. Seven. Yeah. It's like 6.30 or 7. Um, I know we didn't hang out together the entire night. We just kind of met up in the beginning, and then, like, when we were going to do the opening ceremony... We realized that we got there late. We should have done early entry and uh, gotten to the front. We know for next time that when we go, we're going to do that. But, um, yeah, we were going to try to do the opening ceremony and be in the very front. That's why we waited. But uh, if you do early entry, they give you the option to wait. So Mm -hmm. we know for next time. So we got in. We did the early entry. We kind of went our own way, and then you guys went your own way. But Yeah, we got stuck in the back. There was so many people in the back. Yeah, We were, like, in the middle, like, kind of by the store area. And so when we got, I had to actually tell these kids to film, and they, it came out okay. But like you know, it was just I was just thankful. I for think them. I saw that there was some guy on top of the thing. Some guy, yeah. yeah, he was filming for me, and uh, it, it didn't come out too good, but it was good enough to to use his footage. So mm-hmm. that was cool of him to do that. But um, yeah. So the the minute that uh, that we started, we, we we went all the way into the back lot, um, and we did. Essentially, the plan I said I was going to do, except we changed it up because we had the express pass, so Ooh, yeah. we went to, uh, we did Horse of Blumhouse first. Did you go through that? I did not. Horse of Blumhouse was okay. Um, Truth or Dare and Unfriended. I was curious to see how they were going to bring this to life, but nonetheless, they brought them to life, and then the original ending they have, I think, is what honestly saved the maze for me, mm-hmm. because what they did, they took the original ending, and they... Uh, it was basically the intro for Blumhouse, which I don't know if you're familiar with, but in the intro for Blumhouse, it's the they show the little girl and it's like a paranormal area, and then they show the room going all haywire with the chair spinning and stuff like that. And if you watch another, like the next Blumhouse movie coming out, I think is Halloween. So the next time you go see Halloween, you'll probably see that intro. But uh, they kind of took that and like they twisted it up and made it more demonic and stuff like that, which was pretty cool. Uh, we went through the, did you go through the first purge? I didn't. Since I didn't have the express pass, man, I was just trying to get the yeah, mazes that I could. The mazes that you the could. The most popular ones, and they were long. The, the yeah. lines were like two hours, one half. For like yeah, I think Stranger Things. Every time I looked, Stranger Things and Poltergeist were the two longest ones. Mm-hmm. Uh, Stranger Things I always saw was always at like two hours, mm-hmm. stuff like that. So, um, yeah, that was cool. Uh, first purge was good. We we gave them the they so every night at the event they have a person that stands outside in the queue line. Uh, who's, a, who's one of the scare actors or just mm-hmm. one of the actors in general. Uh, and this year they had a guy who was holding the clipboard and kind of looked like he was uh, like recruiting people for the first purge. And if you gave him a password, they gave you a, a special gift of some sort. So it looked like this year they were giving out hats and bumper stickers. In the past, they, they gave out uh, Tucker and Specs from Insidious. They gave out business cards. Uh, they've given out invitations to James Franco's house party when they did no this way. at the end. I got the I got the this is the end one, and then this year I actually got the uh, first purge. I got a purge hat, so that was really cool. Um, I'm not one of those guys who, when I give the password, I yell it out, and I think that's what you get. I mean, either way, I would have been so stoked to get either prize. A bumper uh-huh. sticker, I would have put it on my car. Uh, the hat, of course, I got, which I wear all the time, so... Uh, I think if you whisper it to him, he'll usually give you the better prize, and I feel that that would have been the hat. But nonetheless, it was just awesome. The, the maze was pretty good. I don't know if you've seen the first purge. I have not. But how do you get the password? That's that's one thing. I'm well, so if you follow Hornites on Twitter, 
um, at Horror Nights. He'll mm-hmm. tweet out every night that they have an event. Before the event starts, like an hour or two before the event, he'll tweet out the password to you. Oh. And then you just, you know, you remember wow. that password and then you say it to the person. So, But you got to be kind of quick when you, got, when you do these kind of uh, mazes that have the items like that. Because usually so many people, there's so many fans that follow him that they... They only have so much for each night that they once they're gone, they're gone. Oh, man. Um, Gotta be for cool. next time, then. Yeah. Uh, one of the things I bought, and it's in the other room. I'll show you it after the podcast. But um, for $12, they were selling these limited edition. They only made like 5000 Stranger Things Halloween Horror Night Lanyards. I saw that. Yeah. That, yeah. That was pretty intense. So that that was pretty cool. Um, I thought that was cool that they only made 5000 So I think uh, when I go back, if they have more, I might buy maybe. The design wasn't like, crazy. It, it looks cool. The colors. Yeah, the yeah. cool. It's all blue and stuff like that. So that was cool. Um, did you go through Poltergeist? Did you go through the Metro set at all? Did you go in the back at all? I went. I went to the back just for Stranger Things. Um, but, but you didn't go down. Yeah, no. The group that I was with, they they wanted to do like the most popular. So we did Stranger Things, Halloween. We did the Terror Tram, Terror Tram, and we also did the classic monsters. Okay. Uh, so, yeah. so you did a lot of the good. You didn't do Trick or Treat. No, I didn't. No. Okay. Yeah. So uh, Poltergeist was good. Uh, there wasn't a lot of scares in it, and, and and that's due to it's a movie about, of course, ghosts and stuff mm-hmm. like that. So, but what they what they did accomplish with scares was pretty good, and I have to say that was like the underdog of the event. Um, ha, that was probably one of my favorite mazes this year as well. Um, and then, oh, shoot, did I do something? No. Uh, and then. Um, Another maze that I really enjoyed was uh, Trick or Treat. Mm-hmm. Trick or Treat was good. Um, that's a, that's a good movie, and I really enjoyed that as well. Uh, and then, of course, Stranger Things. Stranger Things and Universal Monsters for me this year took the year. Yeah, so, it really was. It, re- it was really. Um, I like the concept of how they matched them up together, and just gave a gave an ode to them. You know, they yeah. were just like these are the monsters that. Really represent Halloween. Halloween, yeah. So I, I really enjoyed Stranger Things. I had a good time going through that. Um, Stranger Things was honestly they brought every scene from season one that I wanted to see to life, plus more. Mm. Um, and what was cool is actually before we went into that maze that night, we actually saw the guy. Um, so there's two people who are like the face of Halloween Horror Nights, but they like they're like the two main people there's a creative director his name is an executive producer his name is John Murdy he's like the face of the thing and he does all the Twitter does everything um, I see him a lot at conventions and stuff but then they have another guy um, who does all the uh, all the set designs and everything and he does pretty much all like the art and stuff which is Chris Williams and we saw him right before we went to the maze which was really cool so I uh, stopped him uh, he was I guess he was looking to see how well the maze was doing and I shook his hand. I'm like, "Hey, uh, Mr. Williams, nice to meet you. Uh, the, the you know the event's fantastic so far this year. Because at that point, we only went through like the the back three mazes and then the scare zone and stuff. So so we actually got to meet him. Like, yeah, oh, wow. it was really cool. Um, and I've seen him at conventions. I never got to say. I always say hi to John Murdy, but it was really cool to see Chris. Um, and that was fun. And then right after that, we did trick or treat. Like I said, trick or treat was good. Um, a lot of the scenes came to life, and I really appreciated that. Uh, then we went upstairs and we did the Terror Tram. Um, the Terror Tram. Terror Tram was good this year. It. W- I heard that it wasn't as good as last year's where they had, you know, Jason, Freddy Krueger, Chucky. Now, a lot of the haunt community or, you know, a lot of the horror community didn't like last year's because, mainly because of Chucky. And oh. they felt that that was just a way to uh, <laughs> plug in his movie. And oh, yeah, I thought that was, yeah. I thought that was kind of funny, so... Um, but nonetheless, the Terror Tram this year was... I thought it was amazing. I loved the Terror Tram this year, and I thought it was just awesome. Um, I really think that uh, it, it was really good, and um, Kudos the Clown was hilarious this year because uh, <laughs> I, I liked how they actually let him talk this year. The first year we got him in 2016, he didn't talk. He was just a clown, a deranged clown, and uh, I don't know if you were waiting in line and watching the TVs about his background or yeah, yeah, TV. that how he was just there stalking, stalking. Yeah, he yeah. was an employee. So when they first announced him, he was an employee, a former employee at Universal, um, and then the clowns became the stuff of nightmares. So then he kind of lost his job. Mm. Then he kind of went and he hid, but then he reappeared back in Hollywood. And they, in 2016, they caught him roaming around the back lot. There was footage of him. Uh, just walking around the back lot out of nowhere, and people were like, well, is this real? Is this?" Yeah. But it was really cool how they did it, and they tied it into Horror Nights. 
and then he came with his family of of, of carnies and they took over the universal back lot and essentially you know try to terrorize you and stuff so i like the tram how we, when you're going they give you like the little story or inside it like to build it up how you know he's he's uh gotten those two people as yeah hostages. He's, so he's got the uh the tram people as hostages i thought that was awesome and then he's got uh he's got them as hostages and then he tells you what you're going to be walking through and stuff like mm-hmm. that which i thought was really cool um, nonetheless, though, this was probably one of my favorite Terra Trams since 2016. Um, when I started, the first year I went, it was a Scream Terra Tram, and that was the last time we saw Ghostface and Scream at the event. Then the next year, I think the next two years, was The Walking Dead. And then the next two years after that was The Purge. And then 2016 was Hollywood Harry, and that kind of blew fans away because. They have these things at Orlando called icons where like they have one specific person who hosts the event. Mm. Um, in the previous, it's been like Jack the Clown. You know, you got the uh, the caregiver, uh, the storyteller and stuff like that. And they all had different um, demented backgrounds, which I thought was cool. And then it, uh, we thought that we were going to get an icon for that year, which we didn't. But um, then the next year, of course, was the Titans of Terror Tram. And then yeah. this year, they brought back Hollywood Harry, which was really cool. Um, so yeah, I, I, I really enjoyed the Terra Tram, and I hope they do something more original in the future, like how they did with Hollywood Harry, or if they're gonna do something with the property wise to uh, make it really good. Yeah, I really like the concept that they do that they use their own sets and build a story behind it. The, yeah, the, the um the hillbillies eating other people. Oh yeah, yeah, the cannibals, and then the they had the chainsaw dogs, and then you had the scarecrows, and then the clowns, yeah. and then the the sane <laughs> asylum at the end, which was really cool. I like insane asylum. Oh, good. Yeah, I, I'm just kind of disappointed though because in the past, like we we used to go up the hill after the base motel. There's like a hill right there. Yeah, and you used to walk and all that too. And they used to have some good scares, like they had the camouflage guys and stuff. They did say it was longer, but when I went, they were they were looking for somebody up there. Oh really? Yeah, they were, I thought I thought it was part of like the, the gag. show. Yeah, but, uh, but then the police showed up. I was like, oh, they're actually looking for someone up there. Someone it's tried like, to ex- just probably just someone's drunk. Yeah. Well, this was the first year, and and this was the first year that uh, Halloween Horror Nights actually let people drink alcohol. Usually oh, wow. in the past, it's been a dry dry event. Um, but I guess this was the first year they're actually letting people use alcohol. And I don't know if you noticed, but there was a lot more police there this year. Yeah, yeah there was. So um, that, that's kind of why they had to do it, because this was the first year, like I said, them letting them uh, drink in the park while they, you know, the event goes on, which in the I think it's a bad idea. Yeah, especially some people who can't control their liquor. Can't yeah. control their liquor, and then if they get too drunk, they're going to want to punch the scare actors or something like that. Or touch just, them, yeah. Yeah, so like I... And those guys, they work really hard to do what they do, and, and they put in countless uh, sweat and hours into scaring us and stuff like that, and for them to get punched just for doing their job is wrong. And it's, uh, and but, it's for entertainment, but you know. Like I, like, I, like I said in my video, though, if you're going to drink, drink responsibly and, you know, limit yourself. You know, and so. don't punch no scare person. Come yeah, because then you're going to get kicked <laughs> out of the park, you're going to get probably arrested. Oh, you don't that want that. Stuff. That's going to be scarier than the scare. Yeah, you makes. just don't yeah. want it. So, um, What's next? We're going to talk about... Did you watch the Jabberwocky show? I didn't. No. I was with a group that just wanted to walk around. Just walk around. Yeah, uh, so it, it was okay. I'm not a huge fan of the Jabberwockies. I was when they first... Like, the first two years they came, I was like, all right, they're pretty cool. But now it's just like, I'm, it's getting repetitive and I want to see something new. Yeah. A new show. Um, they used to do the Bill and Ted show where they used to uh, do parodies and stuff. And they had to take that away because people were getting offended. And yeah. That kind of pissed me off, but it's one of those shows where, like, if you're tired at the event, you can sit in AC and chill, so it was cool. It was called uh, Connected, so they were aliens again, and they came to Earth because someone was corrupting the Wi-Fi, so they had to turn on the Wi-Fi wow. and stuff, so, and, you know, they do their little dances, and... Well, yeah. at least they have a story behind it, you know? It's yeah. Like just dancing to dance. Yeah, so that, that's, like, the last couple years. Like, the first two years was a dream, then the last two years has been, like, a like an alien kind of type thing and so but after that we went to um the walking dead i believe yeah we did the walking dead just because we wanted to get it out of the way we might as well it was a maze uh the only thing that's that's different uh this time around in hot season is they add a little bit more zombies in areas that are usually not there year round because that's a year-round attraction oh I mean, I don't find the zombies scary. No, yeah, I don't either. But I, I'm a huge fan of The Walking Dead, and just walking through it every time is cool. 
Um, one of the things I'm waiting for them to do is they said when this attraction opened that every year per season they were going to change it up to keep up with the season, and I haven't really seen that at all. Is it, uh, is it still at the prison? You know, like, is that still there? Uh, the season they're on right now, they're in the place called Alexandria. Yeah, um, I mean, but like in the haunt, like the maze. Oh, yeah. Well, they have a scene dedicated to the prison. Oh, uh, okay. I think the scene, I think, I want to say the, the walkthrough maze covers like the first, I want to say seven or eight seasons, mm -hmm. maybe. Um, I know there's no Negan in it, so I think maybe the first six or seven. But nonetheless, uh, the only thing that they change for haunt season is just a little bit more zombies, so they can scare more, more you know, more opportunities to scare people. Yeah. After that, we headed over to um, Halloween Four, and I have to say, this maze was way better than the movie. I gotta say, I really love the the haunt. I, it was all the way in the back, dude. And you go, you gotta go around the whole um, the benches and bleachers. It was. Oh, I, I, you know, back. I've never waited that line. Oh, yeah. Oh, so that was for me, right? And then, like, we, we tried sitting down on the bleachers, but they say, get off the bleachers, can't be sitting there. Yeah. It makes no sense. They're just right there. But when you get in and, you know, you have that, like, one woman on the left hearing, the, the, he, hearing that he's escaped. The and, Penny's Diner. Yeah, yeah. The garage and diner. And it just builds up, like, the whole story. Like, he's escaped. He's out there. He's trying to get you. Yeah. It's like, don't get caught. Um, Have you seen Halloween 4 or no? I haven't. No. So... I would say it's not my favorite out of the series, and this was, they were doing a series where I don't think Jamie Lee Curtis uh, either didn't want to come back at the time, or she just was not, she was trying to get her career going outside of Halloween, and so when they brought back Michael Myers, because, so here here's the storyline, it's one and two, that's, you know, its own universe, the new storyline is one, and then this new one is going to come out, mm -hmm. so that's another storyline, and then um, they did three because John Carpenter initially wanted the series to be an anthology kind of series where every Halloween movie was like a different Halloween tale. So that's why 3 has no Michael Myers in it whatsoever. Oh, okay. So that's why, um, you know, 3 is like a whole thing about a cult wanting to kill kids and their families and stuff like that. Um, and but, uh, but Michael Myers does make a cameo in the movie. Um, in one of the scenes you see on the TV that they're, they're showing Halloween and you see Michael Myers chasing down... Uh, Laurie Strode, so that was that was a cool little cameo. But then they came back for Halloween four. Uh, the four through six timeline is uh, Laurie Strode died. I don't know how she died, but she died, and her niece is the one who's uh, like the new she Myers. Has to face Michael. Yeah. yeah, but then at the end of the fir the fourth one, like her niece like kills her her mom, and then in the fifth one they said that she didn't kill her mom. It's like she's becoming Michael Myers in a way. It's like in her blood to become Michael Myers. It doesn't make That's sense. Strange. Yeah, it doesn't make sense, and then it leads down to like a whole cult, and then like they all worship Michael Myers and shit like that. Wow. And yeah, okay. and, then, and then they, they scrapped that idea, and then the, the H2O, the H, you know, 20 years later timeline, which would re-brought back Laurie Strode, and she has a, a son now. And then, <laughs> and then that was done, and then they did freaking Rob Zombie did two of them, and then, you know. So the, you know, Halloween's all over the place. It depends where you want to go. I like the reboot. That one was pretty cool. The first reboot that yeah. Hall that M Rob Zombie did, I liked it because it went into more detail onto why Michael was as messed up as he was. The second movie that he did was just garbage. <laughs> Damn, all right. I'm taking shots at Rob Zombie. I love Rob Zombie. Don't get me wrong. The guy's <laughs> awesome. Um, but I just didn't like his second movie that he did for Halloween. I just, I don't know. Now, one thing I want to say, like, it doesn't have to be, like, how scary the, you know, the maze was or anything, but these dudes were tall. Like, they were For big. Michael Myers? Yeah. yeah. They were huge. Well, like you. no one's huge for me. Oh, well. I'm six. For six. me, I'm five, like, five foot, five, six. And these dudes yeah. were, like, six foot two, um, just towering above all they, my friends. They got a lot of the iconic scenes, which was cool. And one of my favorite scenes that they got and brought to life is when you're walking through Penny's Diner. And it's the scene where you first see, where Loomis first sees Michael Myers for the first time. Is that time. the guy that was shooting? Yeah. Yeah. That's Dr. Loomis. And in the movie, that's like the first time he ever sees Michael. And he's, and he, so in the, if, I don't know if you're familiar, but in the, in the actual franchise, Loomis is trying to keep Michael in jail. Mm -hmm. Um, so when Loomis sees Michael for the first time, he knows that he's escaped. He's been searching for him throughout this whole movie. May I remind you, that scene is like 30 or 40 minutes into the movie. So when that happens, uh, Loomis, that's when he first sees Michael and he goes, I heard that you escaped and I'm here to stop you and stuff like that. Then he tries to shoot him and uh, he just disappears, which... That's the thing, like, it's a guy, right? But he doesn't die. Like, this dude takes bashes, hits, and everything. Well, now, and that's where it goes back to the timelines again. It depends which timelines you're following. One and two are their own timelines, where mm. in two he was supposed to die. 
now they're scrapping two in the new movie, and they're just going to go from one where he's just been locked up for all these years. Four through six, uh, he comes back out of a coma from the fire and stuff like that. And then <laughs> they they mention uh, he's like the you know the devil, and he's just pure evil. So that's that's the theory why he never dies and stuff like that. But they like I said, they were bringing a lot of the iconic scenes to life when they showed the guy getting electrocuted. Um, yeah, that was insane. The guy that was a cool the, set. I like how it looked. Um, it looked he looked like he was actually electrocuted. Yeah, I like the um, the special effects that they placed on that. Yeah. Looks scary, um, one of the, another scene I liked is when you go into um, the little girl's room and Michael Myers is in there and she gets dragged under the bed and stuff like that. The little girl scared me, honestly. Yeah, that little girl scared me more than Michael Myers. She's wearing like the clown <laughs> yeah. suit and stuff like that. Yeah, it really so. made that part scary. That was pretty cool. He was in the um, closet too. Yep, Michael's coming out of the closet. Oh wow. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, I, I would say that the maze was honestly better than the movie. That's just my opinion, though. Um, I wouldn't say this is the best Halloween maze, but it's up there. I would say for me, my all-time favorite Halloween maze was going to be Halloween 1. It's going to be 1, 2, and then 4. That's my order. I like the movie. Um, a lot of people are already speculating since next year, or since this year the new one's coming out, that next year either part of the Horrors of Blumhouse or its own maze, Halloween's going to be at the event next year again. Mm-hmm. And John Murdy had said that he wants to bring all of them to the event, all the movies and stuff, so that's... We got Halloween for like the next couple years, <laughs> so it should be good. Uh, the next maze we're going to talk about, um, where are we at? Oh, it's probably the last one already, huh? It's uh, Universal Monsters. I saved that one for yeah. last on purpose. Um, for both the podcast sake and when I actually went with George, I literally I told George, I was like, we're doing that maze last. That, that line was actually shorter than any of the mazes so, I went to. So um, the way I want to say it is because everybody, when they get in, they go straight to the bottom and do mm-hmm. everything on the bottom. Um but uh, I hear once people start leaving, and that's one of the last mazes they always choose, and it's always packed towards the end of the event. Um, how long did you wait for that maze? That one was like about an hour. An hour? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that's that's about where it was all night too. When I when I went when, when we went through it, it was like eleven eleven thirty, and it was only like forty five minutes. Yeah. And that's because people were still on the bottom doing all the bottom stuff. But, yeah, uh, those stairs are killer, man. Honestly, that, did you do? Did you I did the stairs because the the escalators were packed, nah, man. They were moving that. so doing, slow. I'm doing escalators. I don't care. <laughs> but um, no, I I really, really, really love the Universal Monsters maze. They did a phenomenal job on that. Um, the opening graveyard. Wait, were you there when it when the power went out on on that section? Did it really go yeah, out? Yeah, it went out and it then died. We, yeah, so I don't know what happened, maybe like a fuse or something, but yeah, the power went out and we all, like everybody in the line started to sit down. We were all sitting there, we waited for like about 10 minutes until it came back on. But yeah, like we all thought that we had to like get out of line or something because it went off completely. Like Shit. all the sound, the music, complete silence. It was just black there? It was black. And then all like the monsters and They were the just coming out there? Yeah, they were just coming out and they're like, what happened? Like, what's going on? Oh, they're trying to figure it out. Yeah. yeah. Um... Now, I wonder, I, I've never been to the event where that happened, but I want to know what happens to all the, because they mix the music and, you know, all the lighting and stuff. I wonder what happened. Did, did it all just work fine then when you went in the maze or? No, no, no. So we were in line and I don't know if the people inside the maze, like yeah. they had to escort it out or like if they kept moving or they just stood still until like it came back on. Yeah. But yeah, like it, it went off. And when when you went, going. now when you went in the maze where all the lighting and everything, it was, everything was working fine. Yeah, everything it was, was working fine. So. Okay. That was my big thing. Like yeah. maybe they when when it gets shot off or something, like it probably fried or they got to restart the system. That's cool though. Um, but nonetheless, man, walking through this maze was awesome. Going through the graveyard, then you see all them come to life: Frankenstein, the Wolfman, a Phantom of the Opera, Dracula. It was cool. Then from the transition from the graveyard to uh, Doctor Frankenstein's castle, you see the angry mob, and they're telling you, "You see monster. the Invisible Man." That one, that one, that one was yeah. pretty. That was legit, and I liked the the effect that they did it. That how they did that. Um, you know, it's just a bunch of black lights and neon lights to try to make him invisible. The black suit guy, yeah, yeah, man. And uh, I, it was funny. He looks like a Hugh Hefner. Does he? I thought he was dressed like Hugh Hefner. <laughs> I thought it was pretty funny. So I was like, straight Invisible Man pimping it out, man. Um, yeah, his section was really cool. I think that was that he's in my new intro by the way so that was pretty really? cool. He was like the only he wasn't like a scare but he was only like a little like section of him. I don't saw him yeah. once. Yeah. I think cuz there's it's so hard to try to master that effect that they did what they could. Mm-hmm. Um and I and I did like the little and then they're playing a lot of the original audio from the movie which was cool. 
Um, I would say, though, Frankenstein pretty much took over this entire maze. Frankenstein, and then second I saw the most was Dracula. I saw the Werewolf Man. That, the the Wolf Man was yeah. cool, um, and I really enjoyed mm -hmm. that. That was really cool. But um, not only that was that, but the Phantom of the Opera looked pretty scary, too. His face. His face was scary. I didn't see too much of the mummy. I only saw him twice. I saw the, the mummy got me so well because he was inside a tomb on the on the wall. So yeah. you're walking, he's on the left side within inside his tomb, and you can't even tell if the tomb is like Yeah, you just it's open, yeah, but it's you, you don't open. You, you can't don't... tell if like it's like a person's inside. Yeah, you just think it's empty or something. And the dude pops up on me <laughs> face first and I didn't expect it and I honestly jumped back. Yeah. Um yeah, he was cool and that room was cool. I think my favorite room to go through was that one and when we went to Dracula's and all the freaking people are dead on the, the table and stuff like that and the wolfman pops out of the the fireplace. I like the mirror fix that they have on there. You know yeah. where Oh yeah. yeah. There was one of it was the wolfman right there and, and then, then Dracula, Dracula and yeah. it was an actual actor. That was pretty cool. Um the one thing I wanted to see and I didn't get to see in this maze though and it made it sound really cool at Scare LA was um and I think they were either in between transitioning the two actors who did it or uh, either that or he just didn't come out. But there's one scene at the very end of the maze where um, Dr. Frankenstein is working on the Bride of Frankenstein. And um, there's supposed to be a – well, at least I didn't get to see it. But what I heard was it was supposed to be Frankenstein who comes out, flips the switch, and you get, and it's supposed to just kind of like explode in a way. What? I didn't get to see that. I didn't – I didn't see that either. Yeah, you remember, you know what scene I'm talking about though, right? The scene where, where Bride and Frankenstein's getting worked on and stuff yeah, like yeah, that, yeah. and then Dr. Frankenstein. And then on the platform right there, there's like a switch for like electrical stuff. Frankenstein was supposed to come out, pull the switch, and it was supposed to have like an effect where he kills us all and blows us all up. And then that was going to be like, no, that's, that, that right? was the end of the maze. I didn't see the Frankenstein, but I saw Bride of Frankenstein and Dr. Frankenstein, which looked pretty cool. Um, but nonetheless, uh, and then it goes out to Monster Masquerade, which was a fantastic scare zone. A great ending to the um, to the maze and stuff like that. The guys on the stilts, man, I hit them. They look like actual Never, props. You got to see guys on stilts, huh? Yeah. I didn't get to see guys on stilts. That's cool. Um, and, uh, let's talk a little bit about the scare zones. I know you didn't go through a couple. You didn't go through, being that you didn't go to any of the backlog stuff, you didn't do Toxic Tunnel or Holidays from Howard. Toxic Tunnel looked pretty sick. Toxic Tunnel was cool. It was a lot better this year than I think in the previous year they've done it. Couldn't see, man, honestly. Did the you go through it? Lights, yeah. Okay, yeah, so... Flashing lights, man. Uh, I couldn't see when they were coming. I couldn't see who was who. And honestly, I almost ran into someone. So, <laughs> Yeah, that was pretty fun. I really enjoyed that. Holidays from Hell was probably the best scare zone this year. Let me go to that one. That was in the back lot area. Yeah. But um, that was awesome. It was different holidays, and they all were. They had a new tale like where they were all demonic and stuff like that, which I thought was really cool. The trick or treat scare zone was awesome. Um, you can go to that one. Yeah, no. No, you should have because that was, in the, that was in the very beginning of the park. Was it really? Yeah, the you know the area where the big school bus was in the park. Yeah, that's where the trick or treat. That's what it was. was. That was a trick or treat. Oh man, I saw a Snow White with vampire fangs, dude. That was trick or treat because <laughs> it, in trick or treat, um, those are actually werewolves. They're turning into werewolves, but they dress as different, like uh, Disney princesses. Oh, I I, uh, I honestly thought, hey, is that allowed? You know? No, yeah, I get what you're saying, <laughs> but uh, no, that was cool. And then the Hell's Harvest was in the very front of the park, uh, and that was all just – it was supposed to be voodoo dolls with chainsaws and stuff like mm. that. They had something funny, though, that was on the side. It was like a cart, and it had two skeleton people in it, and they were just talking and being funny and stuff, which was really cool. I mean, I like passing through uh, the Simpsons, like, Krusty Land part area. Oh, yeah, and they had playing, like, the Halloween music Yeah, that, that was cool. Uh, of course, I bought a donut. I always buy a donut every time I go. The, the Krusty Burgers are really good. Did you did you get a Krusty? I, I never had – I never ate at the Krusty It's area. really good, honestly. I thought it was going to be, like – They have the, the Clogger burger. Yeah, the clogger burger. Dude, that actually looks really... Looks legit. It looks... It looks nasty, but it looks, it looks like nasty, it really yeah. good, too. It looks all like it, you'd get diabetes or something, <laughs> something like that. Um, but every time I go, I, I get the big pink donut. If The next time the you classic. go... classic. How does that taste? I haven't gotten one. so delicious, dude. I suggest next time you go, you get one. It's okay. really good. I haven't tried the other ones. They have a maple one with bacon on it, which I want to try. What? Yeah, I mean, if you like maple bacon. Now, do they sell it at Lard Lads? Yeah, the donut store. And then they used to sell them in various stores, but it looks like that's the main place to buy them now. But nonetheless, it was awesome. Quickie Mart is always packed. Quickie Mart. Yeah, they used to sell them in there. I, I just don't see them anymore. But um, the event, I would say out of 10, I would give it a solid uh, 8.5. 8.5. Uh, that's my rating. Um, I still think 2016 was the best year for Horror mm. Nights. But that's just me. Well, 
I'm gonna be biased on this, you know. And I say I liked it. Um, I'll give it a nine. A nine. A nine. Nine. Not good. a ten because it wasn't really like scary, but but it was really. Good. It had some feature moments. I would say Stranger Things and Universal Monsters took the show this year. Uh, coming in at 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 third for me would be probably between Trick or Treat and Poltergeist. I'm gonna say Trick or Treat though, and then Poltergeist. But uh, it it was a really good event. Um, I'm going back. I think October 14th and November 3rd. I know for sure November 3rd. October 14th is still in the works. See, I wasn't gonna say this, but the reason I'm giving it a nine is because on the terror trap, I hate clowns. Like seriously. Oh, okay. So that's what got me. That's okay. why I'm just like, all right. Clowns. Fucking clowns, dude. This guy. Uh, we're gonna talk a little bit about future events where me and Jeremiah are gonna hit up. So you're gonna be hitting up not scary farm as of this recording tomorrow, but tomorrow, after, yeah. After this has come out, you've already hit it up. But um, question being, are you gonna record or not? And honestly, I would love to record, but I like the experience. Um, I mean, I could try to record on like a mobile device. It's up to you, man. I don't even. I ain't even tripping, really. I just. Uh, I just watch it on YouTube. <laughs> um, I was going to go. I'm, I'm still debating whether or not to go this year. It all depends on how tight money is mm. after I pay off bills and buy my other tickets for other things. Um, like I said, I am going to Horror Nights two more times. I'm taking uh, Athena, and I think I'm going to get front of the line because I saw how crazy the freaking maze lines were, and I did not want to wait them. They're es- insane. Especially Stranger Things. I saw that went all the way out in the back lot, <laughs> and then... All the way back, and then you still had to wait a bunch of lines inside. Yeah, the maze. it was insane because I was just like, "Oh, it's just this little square," and then straight down. Nope. <laughs> yeah, there was like, there was like three alone there. You all right there, buddy? <laughs> I'll be right back. There was like three there and stuff like that. So <coughs> while he's away, I'm gonna just talk about what's gonna be at not scary farm. You want some water? You good? I think I'm good. Okay, yeah. you good. No, I'm fine. Um, what's gonna be at not scary farm this year? <laughs> It's gonna be good. Dark Entities looks good, man. Dark Entities is one of the new ones, and the Depths are are, are the two new mazes for this year. Um, I've already seen footage of the Depths, and it looks pretty good. Um, you're supposed to be in like an abandoned ship, and there's gonna be like some sea monsters and stuff. That looks pretty cool. I've watched the video, and it looks awesome. Paranormal always takes takes the cake. Yeah, that's the Paranormal, one. Paranormal, you know, it's a good maze, but I just wish every year they would change the story. Yeah, you know, I mean, think of the concept. Guys go to record asylum. And scary shit starts happening. But it's the same asylum every year. Like the last four or five years they've been doing it. And I just wish they would just go to like different locations. Like uh, maybe another another hospital or like a But the house. ending, man. The ending gets me every the time. The ending is good. The ending is good. Uh, Dark Entities. That's a new one this year. That's an alien-based one. And I started watching a little bit on that on YouTube. I didn't get to finish it, but it looks, it looks phenomenal. Um, Dark Ride. That maze is so... So good. That's the one with like demonic stuff, right? Like- so in the dark ride, it's and it's abandoned. Uh, it's an abandoned, of course, carnival dark ride. Um, and uh, you go through, and yeah, a lot of demonic stuff is happening in there. Uh, they bring. You know what? I saw Drake Bell in that ride. Oh, did you really? Yeah. So before, um, before I went in it, I saw Drake Bell go in, and then once I was going in, I saw him right in front of me, and I was like, Oh my god, it's Drake Bell! And you know that song goes off in it. Um, the if Drake you and, want, yeah. To know. Yeah, he was actually like correcting people. He's like, "Oh, it's not um, what's that one part? It's all like, yeah, it's gonna I know. take some time. It's not to realize. Re- it's to realign. Uh, realign. Yeah, I just saw that on YouTube the other day. He corrected fans about it, and because yeah. he said he goes, "Realize doesn't rhyme with anything. Realign right rhymes with stuff." And I was and I was like, "Oh, I never knew that. That's good yeah, to know." Um, but Dark Rides is a good one nonetheless. Uh, Pumpkin Eater. I went through it last year. It was okay. The water, man. They have water. Stay away from the water. It smells. It stinks. It got in my eye and it hurt. Did it really? Yes, it did. Oh, my God. It smells. That's gross. smells like um, I, I would say out of all the mazes, Pumpkin Eater was my least favorite. But nonetheless, it's a maze, so you got to go through it. <laughs> One of my favorite of the uh, of the mazes is the uh, Shadowlands, Shadowlands, right? Shadowlands. So in the, the beginning, they have this uh, room to keep you in. And, like, you know, they tell you the story about the samurais and stuff like that. But then a samurai shows up. Out of nowhere, and that is like the coolest trick I've ever seen. That's cool, and I heard that this year there's gonna be a new intro and a new outro. No. So it's gonna be somewhat new, um, oh. but the I, essential maze is gonna be about the same thing. It looks like Scorpion, man. <laughs> um, special Ops Infected. That maze is just all around fun. And you said last time that they gave you two guns if you ask nicely. 
I did. Uh, a defense was working. Ah. So uh, sometimes I do it by the rules, but I got two guns and it was awesome. <laughs> Um, and I was going ape shit. And if you're a fan of Nazi zombies, Black Ops, that's yeah. your mace to go through, dude. Dude, the big guys, they scare me. Yeah, they, they were good. Uh, actually, one year that I actually worked the haunt as a custodian, um, I talked to one of the scare actors, and he was playing one of the soldiers that were guiding people. Yeah. Uh, and that was the same year Walking Dead started, and that was the first year Negan came on the show. So he came to work with a, a Lucille bat. That he made on Yo, his own. No and way. he got to use it as a prop. And they Knotts is really flexible and really cool about that kind of stuff. So it was really cool. The Red Barn, I remember that was another maze that was okay for me. Um, it was just about cannibals and stuff. That one smells, man. It does. And then they made me freaking duck and sit under. I'm like, you know, <laughs> you know how big of a guy I am to do this shit? Um, but nonetheless, it's a maze to go through. That's um, why I'm fortunate for being so short. Yeah, there you go. Trick or Treat Lights Out was probably one of the best ones. Uh, they revamped Trick or Treat, but this time they give you a flashlight and it turns on and off on its own. So in certain areas, it's gonna turn on. I think that's how it was last year, and honestly, that's yeah. really scary. But if you get three hours for that maze last year, if you get stuck behind a slow people, best believe it's gonna t- it's gonna be less scary for you. It is because then you're gonna kind of be expecting what to come yeah. next, and that kind of always kills the vibe for mazes for me. And I hate when people stop or like. Like last, I think for when we went through Stranger Things, there was these girls who were just like terrified and would not move and I was getting pissed because one, I was filming, but two, it's like, go through the maze. I want to experience it too. It's like, (laughs) so those are your mazes for Not Scary Farm. Uh, That started tonight as of this recording and I think it's going on right now, but um, Scare Zones, you got a new one called The Forsaken Lake, which sounds pretty cool. That's going to be right there by um, Silver Bullet in the area where the lake is. It only kind of makes sense, you know? I always like when they have the fog machines. The fog machines, which is Ghost Town. Ghost Town is where you will not be able to see a thing. You see, you see, you hear a lot of people saying, we get it, you vape. Yeah. <laughs> and I just, it's kind of, the hollow is pretty good too. The hollow is right there. and uh, Oh, yeah, I remember the hollow. Yeah, that one oh, I think so was, good. I think that's, where's that? It's Camp Snoopy, right? They do all that right there. I don't know if they still, if they still have, um. They don't do, it looks like they're not the doing horses. The, the, yeah. the headless horseman yeah yeah he comes out every now and then which it's is pretty cool. cool it looks like they're not doing the dia de los muertos one this year though uh, it wasn't that scary if you think about it from last year it wasn't but it was something to kind of get you to the next area because there's nothing in that area and it was a little past it um carnival that's always a fun one clowns so i know you like clowns a lot too no i hate them. <laughs> they uh, they terrify me why one reason you know i told you this i think in the last, last part last podcast the Mainly because of it and uh, Killer Counts from Outer Space. Oh, I love you know, it's just it, they terrify me. They're ugly and they don't deserve to be talking that, <laughs> that voice. And then, uh, if you wanted, you got three shows to check out. This one for sure, I would check out because it's outside in the. Um, Talk about the hanging. Yeah, it's actually outside right there, right in front of the Calico Mine Train in that stage area. Yeah. So I mean, they have different shows. That's only like fifteen minutes. So if you have time, I would definitely at least see that show because that's a funny parody show, and it's standing. So like, there's no seats. It's like first come, first serve. Um, I think I've seen that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, they, it's every the year, stage. every year they they hang someone uh, who's worthy of it, who was the worst of the year. So you know, unfortunately, they don't have the Elvira one anymore. Because, Elvira, um, her last year was last year. Yeah. Um, so that was kind of sad, but and she's beautiful. So, <laughs> hacks cutting room floor. I heard is uh, from one of my buddies. I heard it's actually pretty boring. I guess I won't go to it. Yeah, uh, and Conjurers Magic and Mirth at the Birdcage Theater. Um, it's magic. So I mean, if you want to check that out, I say out of all three shows, though, The Hanging is definitely a must. Every year, that's funny. One of the rides I do recommend at Knotts at night is that one that spins around. I think it's a. Oh, you're talking about. Um... No, it's like this, right? It's like it soul spin. I think it's that one. Soul spin. Soul spin is this one, not that one, right? Or are you talking about? No, you're la, talking revol- about, um, la, la, la revolution. There you go. Oh, that one. That's a. <laughs> that's a more. Yeah. Okay. That's like a more newer one, isn't I it? I love that one. Um, so you're going to non scary form. That should be really cool. Um, and then I'm going to be going to Horror Made here, and I'm very much looking forward to that. We're going to do our first live stream, or we already did our first live stream. If you're watching this. <laughs> But uh, our first live stream is going to happen Saturday, um, and we're going to be live streaming the movie It. I'm not going to be showing it, but I'm going to be live streaming me watching it. All my fans can join my thing and watch it with me, so it's going to be kind of an interaction thing. 
Um, another group that does it is the League of Extraordinary Vloggers. Uh, they do it with HHN stuff, so I thought I would do it with Warner Brothers Hormeet here, get people ready and prepared for the event. Um, being that this year they're going to be doing uh, It, The Exorcist, The Conjuring Universe, The Joker Maze, Freddy vs. Jason. I feel like I'm missing one, but uh, it'll probably come back to me, unless I'm not missing one. I don't think I'm missing one. But um, I asked my fans on Twitter, what movie would you like to watch first? And I gave them the option of Conjuring 1, Freddy vs. Jason, um, It, or Conjuring 2, and they all chose It. That was the highest one, so we're going to be watching It this weekend. Should be fun. It sounds fun. I mean, I don't consider Freddy vs. Jason really scary. It's not, but it's still in the horror genre. <laughs> it's really funny. Yeah, it's really, it's really, it. it's a good, I think it was a good mashup, and I wish, I wish they would do more mashups. That guy like that. that plays Freddy Krueger is so iconic. Robert Englund. Yeah, yeah he's, he's awesome. So, that, that's kind of like that, that's kind of our schedule for this, this month. I, I, I'm going to a couple concerts, and I might be going to Horror Nights two more times. But yeah, that's about. I'm, I'm gonna try to squeeze Not Scary Farm in there, but uh, can't make no promises. So uh, I I got tickets for forty four dollars. So yeah, it's it's reasonable price, yeah. and, and it's not even that. It's just like there's other stuff that I'm get tickets for and stuff. So it's um, really on a tight budget if you're not trying to go to like horror, yeah Halloween horror. So yeah, or if it's your first time going to any haunt, I suggest Not Scary Farm. Yeah. Um, couple things, two more things we're gonna talk about before we end the podcast. Um. They are turning the game Diablo. I don't know if you ever heard of the game Diablo. Yeah, yeah. They have a uh, who's playing the character. Um, I uh, I know the the lead role is going to. Did they already announce who's going to be in the cast? Yeah, they did. They For, did. So Netflix is making a live action series of the uh, hit game Diablo by uh, who does it? It's uh, the people who do World of Warcraft. It's a really massive game, man. It's a crazy, insane game. But uh, yeah, it's just like World of Warcraft, but for consoles, and it's more like demonic and stuff like that. Um, and it, it, it just sounds like it's going to be cool. I, I am very much interested in seeing uh, what is going to be, um, what are they going to do out of the uh, the show. Uh, it looks it? like, oh, it's uh, Blizzard. Blizzard does the uh, game. I don't know if they've casted it yet. They literally just confirmed that they did it. Um, but I know this guy, his name is uh, Andy Cosby, and he wrote the, the script um, Do you think they're gonna base it off the game or like it won't, out? it won't be off the game, but I think it'll be off the same universe. Mm. A lot of the iconic characters will come back probably. I, I, I don't know too much about it because um, I have not really played it too much, but I, I do know like the basic concept of like it's supposed to be like a demonic thing and stuff like that. So and I know it's supposed to be like a World of Warcraft for consoles, so that should be cool. Uh, last thing we're gonna talk about, which would be uh, the Twilight Zone. It's coming back. It's coming back on CBS Access, and Jordan Pill will be the host this time around. The guy from Split. Uh, Rod Sterling was the original host, and if you guys know, he's the one. Uh, I don't know if you've ever been on the Tower of Terror. Yeah. But that was the sadly host. replaced. He yeah. was. Uh, he passed away um, back in like the. I don't. I, I don't know the exact. Uh, I think in like the eighties or nineties or something like that. But um, he was most iconic for that. His voice was iconic. His good looking charms and stuff. You can't really replace that, and that's my that's where I'm a little skeptical about Jordan Peele playing the, the host. Didn't they try to remake Twilight already? So they did Twilight Zone the movie, um, and uh, it wasn't a remake. They just took a lot of the most um, like the most famous uh, episodes they've ever done, and they put them into the movie, mm-hmm. which uh, was honestly, in my opinion. It was actually a really good movie. We're not talking about Twilight with Jacob and Edward, are we? No. <laughs> no Twilight Zone. Uh, yeah. The actual good show about the sci-fi, the sci-fi horror uh, where they took tales and stuff and... Really twisted stuff? Man. Twisted them up. Yeah. So uh, I'm very excited because um, this gives the opportunity to finally make the Twilight Zone how it should have been. Mm-hmm. Um, in the past, it was in like made in like the, like, you know, the 50s, 60s, so it was a black and white. Practical effects all were amazing for the time. They were. Um, and still live up to it to this day. But now that we have CGI and stuff, I'm very excited to see what we're going to come up with. Are we going to come up with new stories, original stories, or are we going to bring back the old episodes and just revamp them, CGI them, maybe bigger actors? Because that was another thing Twilight Zone was famous for. They always had big actors guest star on the episodes. So that that should be fun. I'm very much looking forward to this. Um, CBX Access is doing I think it's their like streaming service, mm. but... 
Um, should be should be fun. Uh, one show I do recommend, kind of like the Twilight Zone, but more like futuristic technologic, is Black Mirror. I don't know if you've seen Black that. Mirror. I think we were talking about that. Yeah, really, really interesting. I heard just, a lot of people have been telling me that too. It's just like the Twilight Zone. It's got like twisted tales and stuff it like really that. Does. And it, um, it gets to you because it's really uh, probable. Yeah. Possible. Speaking yeah. of twisted tales, and it's funny we bring that word in because I am in the talks, and I won't say with who. But um, just for secrecy's sake, because uh, just because I want to keep it a secret, but I am in the talks of possibly uh, bringing the show that I wrote. I wrote a whole first season of a show called Twisted Tales, and basically the way I would put it is American Horror Story meets The Twilight Zone. It's as sinister as American Horror Story, but there's like the, the Twilight Zone aspect is there is a host, um, and I'm in the talks with a production. Uh, no way. Not a big time production company. It's still but, a production, man. Um, and we're probably gonna be bringing it to life. I can't make any promises. I'm not. Uh, we're we're still like very much in the early talks, so um, should be good. Very much looking forward to it. Um, and yeah, so should be good. I'm not. That's all I'm gonna say. Best of luck. Best of luck. Yeah. Twisted Tales. Um, I did make a prelude episode on uh, YouTube to kind of see how it was, and I'll probably put the. I'll probably link down in the description below, but I, I did a I did a, a prelude episode to one of the clown characters, so that should be cool. Um, yeah, I'm very much looking forward to it, man. It's gonna be a good future. I, I'm gonna start. I have someone else who's gonna be helping me get media passes to different events for horror, so that should be good. So next year, hopefully, I'll be attending the uh, red carpet for Horror Nights. That'd be fun. No way. That'd be cool. And if I do, I might have to invite you because I need a camera person. All right, if I do go, and I am the camera person. I get to ride the rides first. You get to ride. You ride if you want. I don't care. Just, uh, <laughs> we're going to have press passes, so we're going to be interviewing probably celebrities. Can I be a celebrity? No. <laughs> <laughs> Just, um, but yeah, it's going to be fun if we get press passes. Um, hopefully, I'll try to get it for all four of us. But if I can't, at least me, you, and George. Yeah. Because George can easily be uh, taking care of sound stuff. You can be filming. And I'll be, of course, doing the interviews because it looks like I'd be the only one that wouldn't be as afraid to talk to people, you know? Yeah, talk to people is a, would be scarier than the mazes. Especially since they're <laughs> actors and directors and producers and uh, stuff like that. Uh, but I'm in talks with another YouTuber to help me fill out media forms uh, to get me to media events. On top of Twisted Tales possibly getting uh, coming to life finally. I, that's been in the works for about two years now. And I'm very excited to finally be bringing it to life. And then we got stuff that we're probably going to do pretty soon with pranks and stuff like oh, that. Oh, yeah, man. Honestly, uh, in specs of moving out, I was thinking of starting to vlog how it is moving out so yeah. people can understand how that works. That's so, a good way to kind of get around to who you are, too. So, yeah. Um, and how to handle situations. You know, because some people, like, when they feel like the world is crumbling down on them, they feel like they have nowhere else to go. But, you know, I want to film a vlog how moving out can't be that hard yeah like, you know how you can survive and if i've done it best belief that they can do it too yeah um plus you can vlog us doing the podcast too yeah. so that'd be fun uh if you guys don't know we do the podcast very late at night it's already 1 8, 108 in the morning so all right guys that's gonna do it for our recap and our future plans and a bit of news uh on the mindless horror podcast thanks for tuning in make sure to tune in uh, next oh i forgot to tell you next time we might be interviewing a scare actor from not scary farm here, I don't know about here. I'm trying to schedule that still, uh, so I don't. Ma I'm not making any for sure promises. Ooh, but, spicy! I'm excited. But um, I, I talked to a scare actor today on his live stream, and I asked him if I can get an interview with him for my for the podcast. And he said, uh, "Follow me on social media. Let's set it up." Um, and if that's so, I will bring my laptop anywhere, and I will find this guy, <laughs> and we will sit down and have an uh, interview with him. Um, and that's cool. If you guys want to find out who this guy is, his name is Art Dracula. He is on YouTube. He is a funny, funny scare actor. He's got videos of him scaring people and just being funny and stuff. But uh, he is by far one of probably the best uh, scare probably actors. Probably has me. I scream like a little girl. So. Yeah, you know, he's funny. You might see him at the event tomorrow. Um, I think he usually does Ghost Town stuff. Um, he's usually in between Ghost Rider and Ghost Town and in the front and everything. I try to stay away from him. Um, but if you want to look him up on YouTube to kind of see, it, he's really funny actually. If when he scares you, he kind of he's just kind of like a lot of people know who he is. So like when they yell his name, it's funny. But um, expect that hopefully pretty soon. Um, so I'm very much looking forward to that. Yeah, man, definitely. So that is gonna do it for the Mindless Sword Podcast. I'm your host Anthony. I'm your host Jeremiah. And we are the Mindless Horror team. 
the Mindless Horror Podcast. Thank you for subscribing and being part of the Madhouse. Thank you for being a knight. And we will see you guys in the next podcast. Goodbye.